Hi everyone. I am recording this from the Grand Hilton Seoul. Um, I just got back from my adoption agency, Eastern Social Welfare Society. I had asked them to find my foster mother so I could meet her, and they weren't able to locate her. But I got an email while I was while I arrived in Korea saying that um, they had found her and that I was going to get to meet her today. So I went, and the first thing that they did was introduce me to. Um, the founder of Eastern Social Welfare Society, who's actually 93 years old. And so after I met with the president and the founder, um, the social worker took me back down stairs and my foster mother had arrived. It was just, I went, I walked in and she started speaking in Korean and the social worker hadn't gotten in yet, so I couldn't understand any of it. But she was just touching my face and like, she kept putting my hair behind my ears and just like grabbing my arms and, um, she told uh, the social worker to translate to me uh, how happy she was and how um, it seems like just yesterday that I left. Uh, she told me that um, it's so hard to uh, say goodbye to the babies when they go to their families and that sometimes after the babies would leave she wouldn't be able to eat for a few days and just how wonderful it was to see me again. Uh, she told me that uh, when I left, I was. she just remembers how young I was because I was only three months old when I was adopted, so I was one of the youngest to travel from Korea. Uh, and she told me that she wanted me to meet her family, that she has two sons and two daughters, and they all remembered me. Um, and one of her daughters wanted to come with, but she said that, no, it was her time with me, so her daughter, she wouldn't let her daughter come. Um, and we just, it was hard because she, I couldn't speak Korean, and so we had to translate through the social worker. And I was really stupid. I didn't bring any pictures of my family with to show her because she's asking about my parents and my brother. And so I actually asked them if I could show her on the computer. So I pulled up a photo album online of um, my family while we were on a cruise and um, pointed out, you know, Mapa, Nam Dong Sang, Hal Rani, Haraboji, and she enjoyed that. And um, so we we talked and uh, took pictures, and she asked a few more questions about me, and um, it was just wonderful. She said that uh, she hadn't, she didn't have any words, but that um, just looking at me and. Um, was enough. She didn't really have that many questions about my life because she said that I looked so happy and to thank my parents for taking such good care of me. And when I left, she gave me an envelope because she wants me to write her letters. And she told me that her granddaughter speaks English and can translate for her. But she, she pulls out money. She gave me like um, 3,000 won. She just, um, wait, I'm really bad at math. Whatever. No, that's like three dollars. So, like, um, thirty thousand won. So she gives, she pulls out money and puts it in the envelope for me. And I was like, honey, honey, no, 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 I don't need, I don't need money from you. But it was just really sweet. And um, she told me to buy a souvenir to bring back to my family. Um, and so she wanted to actually take drive me back to my hotel. Um, um so I wouldn't have to take a cab. But then the social worker said that. There was one more thing that I needed to do and um, that she I, she probably shouldn't wait for me. So I said goodbye to her. Um, and it was just really hard because it felt like there was so much more that we needed to catch up on. Um, but we didn't have very much time and it was really hard with the translator. So um, she said goodbye really quickly because she said that it was too hard to say goodbye to me again. Um, and then um, my social worker brought out my file that I didn't know I was going to get to see and um, she went through it with me. She opened the file and um, she told me that uh, she didn't know how much my adoptive parents had told me um, and she didn't know how much they actually knew because because of Korean law they might have been told a different story because um, it was really hard for married couples to be able to give children up for adoption. So the first thing she told me was that um, my birth parents were actually married when they um, when, when they relinquished me, and that I have two older sisters. <laughs> um, they had two 
two daughters already, and um, my my biological father was a taxi driver, like uh, my parents told me. And he um, got in a traffic accident. He caused a traffic accident while he was driving his taxi, so um, he wasn't able to work. Um, they took away his, they suspended his license, and so that they were having trouble making money, and so. Um, my birth mother, I guess they were separated, um, and she thought that it would be better if um, they gave me up for adoption. So she brought me in, so she went to um, the agency and um, arranged my adoption. Um, and she went through the details, um, telling me about um, what, what my birth mother had given them um, about her and my birth father telling me, you know, their ages and where they were born. And then my social worker told me, um, she, she said, I have good news and bad news. And she said the good news was that um, they found the last known address um, of my birth mother, but that they hadn't been able to get in contact with her and that she's going to try to send her a telegram. Um, to see if she can get in touch with her while I'm here. And then she told me that she, um, the bad news was that she looked up the record for my biological father and um, it said that he had passed away in 2004. And so she said that she was so sorry, but um, she didn't know any details. Um, she thought that it must have been uh, maybe an accident of some kind since that's a young age um, for him to have died and um, that she would still keep trying to look for my biological mother and um, my sisters, but that um, my sisters were so young they might not have told them about me, so um, it might be difficult to find them. And then she just asked if I had any more questions, and um, I was so overwhelmed by all the information that I had been given that I just asked her to help me get a taxi because um, sometimes it was hard for, it's hard for me to tell the taxi drivers where I want to go and um, that I don't speak Korean. Um, so she made photocopies of stuff. Oh, and um, she gave me this. <laughs> Kyung Sun, that's my Korean name. This is a book that my parents made for me and they sent to Korea. Um, we can't wait to be your mom and dad. Um, this is our house. I guess this picture fell. Um, and they just it's sent pictures of my family, my grandparents, to introduce them. Uh, at the end it says, we love you, hurry home. Uh, and I just thought it was so sweet. And uh, my parents are going to be so surprised that I have this when I tell them. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I came back to the hotel and I was supposed to meet up with um, the rest of the people at the conference um, to have dinner, but I think I'm just going to stay here because I need time to let everything sink in and figure stuff out. But um, I just want to say that I know that a lot of other adoptees have been contacting me and adoptive parents um, through YouTube because of my videos, and um, i just like to conclude by saying that um, I don't regret going to the agency at all. I wish that I had gone sooner, but at the same time, I'm glad that I was old enough um, to be able to appreciate everything and understand everything. And also that I was old enough to where I felt like going back, um, I'd become somebody that they could be proud of. So anyway, I guess, <laughs> sorry, long conclusion, but what I'm saying is that if you're an adoptive parent, I would definitely support your children's decision to go back and visit their agency and meet their foster parents um, because it was amazing and make sure that they they know that you're, you're behind them. And um, I know my parents were really excited for me to get to do this. Um, and adoptees, if you're having any concerns or hesitations, reservations about coming back to Korea, do it. <laughs> I haven't seen much of Seoul because I've been cooped up in the hotel room, but um, I know that I want to come back again. I'm thinking about coming back here to teach English for a year because I need to devote more time. This is something that I you, I can't even describe. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to describe. Um, hopefully that will encourage you to come here and find out for yourself um, how important it is to come here.